What's up guys, this is the Gospel According to Mark with a C. He is I and I am he. Just taking some time to tell you exactly what's on my mind. Thank you for joining me once again, my friends. And as always guys, you can like, share, and subscribe and hit that notification bell. When you do subscribe, remember there is a super thanks feature on all of my videos. It highlights your comment and then I respond to the comment whenever I see them. So thank you in advance for that. Thank you for all who have given and uh, thank you guys just for being here. Now listen guys, really quickly, I wanna talk about the Schneiderverse. Yes, the Schneiderverse. And I ain't talking about Zack Snyder. Let's make that clear. All right. I am talking about creator of child content or children's content on Nick, 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 Nickelodeon. Dan Schneider is who I'm talking about. Dan Schneider. Okay. I think this guy was like an actor back in the day, even. I think he starred on... um. Uh, head of the class, I believe it was, with Robin Givens and Howard Hessman, I think it was, back in the day. But anyway, he went on to create his own Schneiderverse. And it was a, a universe of um, children's content, like I said before, children's programming. And um, he created TV shows such as iCarly, uh, Victorious. Uh, when my son was coming up, I know he used to watch Henry Danger and this other show, um, Game Shakers, I believe it was. And he watched those shows, right? So it turns out Dan Schneider has gotten himself in a little bit of trouble here. And um, this isn't something that's new, actually. This has been going on for a while. These rumors have been dogging him for a while. But people are beginning to talk about this. And I think it is really interesting to shine a spotlight on it because there's a lot of people out there that when we talk about some of the things that we talk about here in this fandom, inevitably you get a pushback oh it's just entertainment you people read too much into it there's never any agenda there's never any wrongdoing these people should never be questioned about what their intentions are and here's an example of just why it is necessary to have standards and to watch what your children are watching and to question everything that you see on that screen and you raise your children to do so as well. All right, so I have this story here from buzzfeed.com and I wanna get into it because I wanna contribute to the conversation here and to push it along so that we might have a better understanding of each other, exactly why I do the things that I do, knowing full well that I am a parent. And I told you guys for years, that's what my primary motivation is when I'm doing this, just to put a little bit more reasoning and common sense and analytical thinking into the game. All right, so buzzfeed.com. And the um, headline goes, <clears throat> Actors and crew have alleged on-set abuse by Nickelodeon TV show creator Dan Schneider. And it goes on to say, this is a warning, it's a discussion of child abuse. Okay, so let's, let's have that understanding right up front. In a new investigation from Insider, cast and crew members who worked with TV show creator Dan Schneider have alleged that his sets were disgusting, toxic, and hostile. The report came shortly after the release of Jeanette McCurdy's personal memoir in which she chronicles moments from her time on iCarly, a Schneider-created show, where someone called the creator massaged her shoulders, made her wear a bikini, and forced her to drink alcohol, all while she was underage. Now keep in mind, guys, underage would be the operative word here, all right? Because when you get into showbiz and you're an adult and you choose to be there, well, you know, whatever happens, happens. You know, you're a free-thinking adult. You can consent. But when you're underage, what makes this so disgusting is you're dealing with a majority of um, underage children in this particular sector of the industry, okay? So she says that she was forced to wear a bikini and forced to drink alcohol all while she was underage, according to her, okay? Allegedly. Now, Schneider has been creating TV shows for Nickelodeon since the 90s. His shows include The Amanda Show, All That, Drake and Josh, and Victorious. In 2018, the network parted ways with him after an investigation revealed he had verbally abused his colleagues. Though some of his young stars have alleged other types of abuse, the investigation, this particular investigation, found no evidence of this. However, just last week, Alexis Nicholas, who played Nicole on Zoe 101, Another show created by Schneider protested outside of Nickelodeon's headquarters, holding a sign that said, Nickelodeon didn't protect me. Nicholas has previously discussed the trauma she went through on the Zoe 101 set. 
Now, more cast and crew members have come forward sharing their stories of working with Schneider. In the Insider Report, Daniela Monet, who played Trina in the Nickelodeon show Victorious, alleged that Schneider and his mostly male crew of writers created unnecessarily sexualized content for his teenage female actors to perform. Now, guys, like I said, I watch everything that my son watches, and I remember watching Henry Danger and Game Shakers with him. He really loved those particular shows. And um, a lot of times, yeah, there were certain things that maybe be like, hold up. What did he mean by that? Like, a lot of that that dialogue was very suggestive. You know what I mean? Like, I remember in one show, one of the adults came in, and uh, he was holding a bag of, um, of balls, you know, to play with. And he comes into a, group, a room of kids and says, who wants to play with my balls? Laugh track. I was like, hey, hey, you know what I mean? And you saw these things, you know, in Henry Danger, it was a recurring theme that Captain Man wanted to sleep with Henry Danger's mother, who was very much married to Henry Danger's father. And this was a running joke. That used to go on whenever the father was gone, whenever the father was in jeopardy, whatever, Captain Man was ready to move in. It was no secret that Captain Man used to be sleeping with dudes' wives, you know what I'm saying? This is children's content, okay? So I'm saying, as a parent, back then, it made me be like, you know something, these guys behind the scenes, they're, they're a little bit suspect here, you know what I mean? So it says here... <clears throat> After filming a scene in which she eats a pickle with one hand and applies lip gloss with the other, Monet, who is over 18, or she was over 18 at the time, asked Nickelodeon not to air it because she thought it was too sexual, but they refused her request and aired it anyway. Now, she was over 18. She wasn't underage. So, you know, that just goes to show you how dirty the industry is. However, did they break any laws? I don't know, you know. She's over 18 in this case. Monet also commented on Schneider's involvement in the female actor's wardrobes and said they were not age appropriate. Uh, okay, but when you look at female or teenage wardrobes in general, you know, like the trend is, they show a lot. If you go to the mall, you're going to see a bunch of ass, because especially in the summertime when it's hot outside, because a lot of these girls are wearing insanely short shorts and everything. All you be seeing is butt cheeks. People talk about dudes walking around with their pants hanging down. Well, girls walk around with their with not much going on. You know, either way, you're going to see ass, whether it's dudes or girls at this point. It's crazy, but it makes you wonder who's behind the fashion industry. The I mean, this thing is soaked all throughout our whole culture, you know, and that's the reason why you have to question everything. You know, like I said, we go through a lot of grief here. You know, I know I go through a lot of grief talking about what is the true intention behind things like race swapping, um, gender, you know, like forced diversity, all of this stuff. What is it really when it's not really serving the actual story? It's more exploitation, and that's what this industry is. It is about exploiting. It is about totally soaking up the talent that you have and leaving not much, you know, and that's the reason why so many child stars fall to the side. You know, this is nothing new. You go back to the days of Shirley Temple, you know, and um, Dennis the Menace, you know, things like that. You see those actors usually end up pretty fucked up because that's what the industry does. You know, it uses them, it sucks them dry, it exploits them, you know, and this is what we see all throughout our culture. I don't care if it's entertainment, I don't care if it's movies, TV shows, um, I don't care if it's politics, you know, unfortunately, this is the ultimate truth of the life that we live in. So many predators, so many hunters that's out here, it reminds me of a, a 1955 movie that my mom introduced me to, Night of the Hunter. If you guys have been watching me long enough, you've heard me reference this when I start, when I start singing, leaning, leaning, that was a hell of a movie. It was terrifying. It starred Robert Mitchum and Lillian Gish, and it was about a preacher or actually it was a, a criminal who was posing as a preacher who was trying to stalk these kids after killing the mother because the mother actually married this guy and he was posing as a, a man of God. But what he was really after was money that those kids' father had actually stashed. And, um, you know, so he was stalking them. He was going to kill them. And um, it was crazy. Night of the Hunter. If you've never watched it, 1955, watch it, man. And um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to put one of the images in the thumbnail. But 
one of the things that this old lady who's protecting the children now, now that the mother has been killed, um, one of the things she said that always stuck out with me is she says, it's a hard world for little things. It's a hard world for little things, you know, for children, because we tend not to take them seriously. We tend not to really watch what they watch. We tend not to protect them, you know, but that's what this industry counts on. It counts on us not watching what they watch and not protecting their senses. And this might be the reason why we see our society going the way it's going today. Children's programming should be trusted. You know, we should be able to trust that for the kids. Not just leave them in front of the TV and let them soak in whatever evil is out there, but that's what's going on. You know what I mean? And I wanted to um, highlight this because I know everybody's talking about other things. You know, we're talking about rings of slumber and, you know, all of this stuff that's out there. I'll be talking about that again soon. But um, I wanted to point this out because this was actually trending this week, this whole Dan Schneider thing. And people should take a closer look at what's going on because Nickelodeon is still out there. They're still exploiting kids. You know, the movie's still doing the same thing. They're exploiting each other. And um, that's what the industry basically is. All right. So um, I just wanted to put it out there, guys. And I want to get your opinion on that. Like, are you seeing this? Do you watch these shows with your kids? Have you noticed anything like this? What do you think can be done to better protect these kids? Not just on screen, but off screen from what these people are showing them. Because like I said, when you look at um, the way they want to incorporate uh, gay issues, uh, drag queens, you know, transgenders, all of this stuff they're pushing on kids, they're overloading them, they're saturating them they're with all of these new ideas and things like that. that these kids are not developmentally ready for. You know, so it's another form of exploitation and abuse, man. It's a hard world for little things, you know, but we as the parents, as the adults need to be able to look at these things with a critical mind and say, you know, maybe this is something that's not good for my child. You know, maybe this is something that's not good for, um, you know, their development or anything like that, you know, or maybe it's something that is good. You know, it's every person's uh, choice. You know, that's not, not something that's big these days. The actual idea of people having an individual choice, you know, thought control is very big right now, but this is how you exercise your power. All right, guys. So this particular article, I'm going to leave in the pinned comment below so you can check it out a little bit more. And um, like I said, you're invited to get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about this. And um, thanks for listening, guys. I'll check you on the next one. This is the gospel according to Mark with a C. And there goes my lights. <laughs> Lights out! Rock on! <laughs>